Hey everybody, Alex from SeemsGoodMagic.com here, and we're doing an 8-4 Magic Origins draft. Okay, well, we open Harbinger of the Tides, which is an actual good card. I like it. I think I'm going to take Draga Invocation. It's a 6-drop, but it's a pretty strong card. There's also Fiery Impulse, though, which is cheap removal. I'm sure it's also good. Draga Invocation strikes me as a pretty powerful card, though. It's kind of like a mini overrun effect. And the thing I didn't realize originally about Draga Invocation that's insane is um, each creature you control, it says each creature you control, you know, gets boosted and must be blocked. So they can't actually block all of their guys on one of your guys. Like they have to split their blocks up too. So it is really like a board wipe sort of one-sided board wipe. I mean, granted, it requires you have a bunch of creatures, but... I think there's a huge upside to it. And uh, the rare is actually pretty good, though. Harbinger of the Tides is nothing to scoff at, but I'm, I'm going to take the Invocation. All right. Well, Valerian Warden seems like a fine follow-up pick. There's another Fiery Impulse, which is definitely good. Eve is Force Mage, which I think I underrate. I probably should rate it a little bit higher if I'm ever playing Beatdown. It's just very good with Renown. And uh, forcing attacks through early on, I think. So also you have Maya Coast in here, which I wouldn't mind. But I think Valerian Wardens is actually potentially very good. So we'll take it. I haven't gotten a chance to play it much. Well, Evolutionary Leap is probably fine. There is a Unholy Hunger in here. And Visionary. I think Visionary is good. It works better with the Invocation. But uh, Unholy Hunger is probably the strongest card. There is Celestial Flare too, but it doesn't hold a candle to Unholy Hunger, I don't think. Um, Evolutionary Leap is, is pretty pretty decent, actually. It's a nice in response to your removal or my guy, uh, just if you want to upgrade. But I don't think I take it. I think I, I think I probably take Unholy Anger. It's a pretty strong removal spell. Green Black is pretty good. It's an... Elf strategy, or you can just play, you know, rock value. Either one works. But Unholy Hunger strikes me as the strongest card remaining in this pack, so we'll take it. Okay, so no green picks. Oh, actually, yeah, take that back. There's a Vastwood Gorger. It seems a bit early for that. I can take Clash of Wills, which is good. Uh, it's a good counter spell. Fourth pick, not necessarily a sign. Fiery Conclusion is good, too. Um, I do like Clash of Wills. Do I just want to take Gorger? I mean, it's early enough. We're, we're just sort of seeing what's open. I should take the best cards. I do think Wardens is good, though. Like, I picked it over removal again, but I have a feeling this card is pretty powerful. Turning into a 3-5 on turn 4... That draws you a card is pretty insane. I feel like I take the Clash of Wills here. I just think it's a good card. Okay. Uh, so there's a couple green cards. Which is all well and good. Read the Bones might just be the strongest card in this pack. Probably is. I think we just... We, we take strongest cards for now, and we see what wheels. I guess Weight of the Underworld is removal, but Read the Bones just strikes me as better. I'm going to take Read the Bones. Okay, so there's Eye Blight Assassin now, which is pretty good. There's also Titanic Growth. I mean, Eye Blight Assassin will work out better if I end up green-black because it is an elf. Might get a little elf sub theme going. There's also Rune Servitor, Servitor which is a two-drop, but I think Assassin is just better. All right. So another Gorger. This is a pretty late Separatist Void Mage. Uh, Displacement Wave is pretty interesting. Potentially, if you have some high-costing guys, I mean, you get to control it, which is pretty good, but I probably still would prefer, like, a Void Mage. 
But then that kind of moves me out of green, which I'm not sure I want. But, I mean, Vassar Gorger is not the most exciting pick anyway. I feel like four, five, six drops are usually pretty easy to come by. It just strikes me as a, what is it, seventh pick Void Mage? It seems pretty insane. This card is very good. Yeah, I mean, it kind of seems like Blue's open. Because we're getting late, pretty good playables. There is an empath here, too, admittedly. But I think I just want Aeronaut now if blue's open. Maybe blue-black is the direction I'm supposed to go. All right. I'll take weight here. It's not insane, but slightly more exciting than Screeching Scab, I think. Um, I mean, there's a Force Mage, yeah. Probably just take Negate, get my first one. I don't really like Dark Dabbling all that much, I don't think. Um, Alright, I'll take the Barrier. I don't really like that too much either, but it could be a control card. Alright. Way to the Underworld, not so good, but... Second to last pick, playable 2-drop is in blue is not a bad sign. It seems like blue-black is kind of the direction I should go. Like... Like I said, 7th pick Void Mage is pretty remarkable because the card's good. 8th pick Aeronaut. These cards are very playable. Weight of the Underworlds are, are best in your black-white sort of uh, build. Well, interesting. Turn to Frog, which currently I don't love. I mean, I guess there's some synergy with, like, Eye Blight Assassin in it. But I don't love it. it seems like the strongest card is probably... Wild Instincts. There is also Evolving Wilds. Maybe that's supposed to be the first pick. Throwing Knife's pretty good, but am I going to be able to... I feel like you usually get to... I haven't gotten a chance to play with this, to be honest, but I've played against it, and I've always thought it was good. It is Equipment. Yeah, if we have some more token producers in blue, too, maybe. Or just if we end up with some cheap stuff, it can be very good, I'm sure. Otherwise, Evolving Wilds, but... I would say blue-black is typically more control, so if you're more control, equipment gets a little bit worse. But throwing knife strikes me as a particularly good one. I mean, tragic arrogance is very strong, but I think we'll take throwing knife. I'll give it a go. Tower Geist is huge. I think we just slam that. Love this card. There's a water courser in here, too. Other than that, nothing much. But yeah, Tower Geist is very good. Talent of the Telepath... Uh, reveal top 7, cast an instant or sorcery without paying its mana cost. Otherwise, I can cast 2. It's only okay. Um, I might just want Deadbridge Shaman here. A second read to Bones would be good too. But I think we're a little bit creature light, especially since we're likely just dipping out of green at this point. Yeah, and one of them's like a Nivix Barrier. I think we probably just take the Deadbridge Shaman. Which is a fine card. Okay. Water Courser's probably what I want. It's just a very good creature, good reason to be in blue. It's another read the bones, but Cobwalt's is fine. Calculated Dismissal is only okay, but maybe we wheel it. Water Courser is just good. Like, I'll play to read the bones, but I think for now I'd rather just get some nice playable creatures to make sure we have a nice creature count. Because a couple of our spells are Weight of the Underworlds, which I would prefer to not play two of. Like, I'm probably okay with a one of, but I'd probably prefer to not main deck negate either. Not that it's terrible, it's just it's a better sideboard card, especially when you already have a hard counter. Shadows of the Past is fine. Um, there's actually nothing else, really. Jeez, Undercity Troll now? We'll take Shadows of the Past. I think a control deck is a good place for it. Because if you can stall out long enough... Um, it just becomes a win condition. So, all right. Shadows it is. All right, now it's a bit of a miss. I think we probably just take... Um, I don't think it's very likely I'm playing Night Snare. Maybe we just hate a Blessed Spirits, which strikes me as the best card in here. Jeez. 
Bit of a miss again. We can take Return Centaur or Bone to Ash. Guess we'll take Bone to Ash. Uh, Fairy Miscreant. It seems a bit late to try and get on that plan. This isn't exactly the deck for it. I guess I'll take Scab number two. There's like, unfortunately, late green cards now. All right. Take Evolving Wilds. Although, not necessarily, not likely to splash at the moment. Brawler's Plate. I kind of already have Throwing Knife, which is probably better. I guess I'll take the Centaur over the third Weight of the Underworld. If I had a Blightcaster, the weights would be better, but... I don't think I'm going to play a Psychic Rebuttal, but I'll take it anyway. All right. Dismissal versus... I guess I'll take the Dismissal. Ah... Uh, I'm not really liking our deck that much. I feel like pack one we got kind of a sign that blue is open, but I mean, we got some decent blue picks here. Just nothing that I would say, nothing to write home about. We'll pass a demolish to somebody. So really in pack three, what am I looking for? Probably don't want to play in a gate. To be honest, I don't want to play both way to the underworlds. I mean, I will, but I'd prefer not to. We have some decent counter spells now. We have the full trifecta. Um, so I want some more hard removal, I think. I wouldn't mind. We need more creatures, too. Jace's Sanctum is not really doing it for me. Probably just take a second. Aeronaut. Not the most exciting first pick, but a pretty decent card. More stuff to equip Throwing Knife, too. Probably a better card than Return Centaur, I would say. Okay, there's a pile driver in here. Maybe Foundry of the Councils is actually what I consoles rather is what I want. There is a disperse though. This uh, it's not the best disperse deck. We are a little bit removal light, but disperse. It's better for, like, tempo. I think we're going to end up with enough playables, so i probably just take the Foundry, which is something I'm just going to want. It can help you when you're getting flooded. It's like an extra, you know, couple guys out of nowhere. Or you can leave up a counter, both of which are pretty good. I think we'll take it. Seems like something I'm going to want. All right, Chief of the Foundry is actually pretty good for our deck because we have a couple Aeronauts. Um, and it can just be... A nice pump for that. There's another Foundry of the Consoles, and there's Shambling Ghoul. But I like that Chief comes down and is able to block right away. We might even get another token producer. It's a pretty... St actually, and we have the Foundry. Yeah, I think I'm going to take Chief of the Foundry. Seems like a card that's... Potential upside is good for us. All right, Claustrophobia is hard removal. I'll take it. Jeez. Well, I could take the 7-drop Sphinx. Might be something to build towards. What's our removal right now? We have Clash of Wills, sort of. Eye Blight Assassin is sort of removal. Barrier, I think, is just not going to get played, preferably. Weight, sort of. Separatist. Uh, it is seven drop. But we're short on, like, win cons. I think I have to take a win condition here. Yeah, I'm going to take the win condition. Willbreaker. Well, what can I abuse with Willbreaker in our deck? I really can't. Well, actually, that's kind of cool. Throwing Knife lets you target without using, so you target it, and then you steal it. That's... Kind of cool, actually. And what am I giving up for? Just like a Scrapskin Drake, which honestly isn't even good for our deck anyway. All right. The problem is I don't have much beyond that. Maybe I find a Rogue's Passage. People mentioned I should have paid closer attention to that. This Claustrophobia is fantastic. It's like right up our alley of what we want. Eye Blight Massacre is actually pretty interesting. Um, besides the fact that we have a couple Elves... It is like a good way to stabilize. I guess it's not good with our aeronauts, but otherwise I'm taking like Ring Warden Owl, which is actually decent. It is decent. Masker is potentially very good. 
Like, I'd rather just run that over Way to the Underworld, honestly. I think Eyeblade Massacre c could come up huge for us. So I'll take it. Could also suck, but we'll see. All right, Maritime Guard. At least a good sideboard card against Hyper Aggro. It also does survive Eye Blight Massacre. It doesn't strike me as a Bloodsucker deck, just because we're controlling more, so maybe I'll just take a Slug, which I don't love. Okay, well, we got Disperse back. I'll, I'll take it. I'll play one Disperse, I think. Which is fine. Macabre Waltz, I might want this. Bring back our, our rares. I'm not going to play Bonded Construct, I don't think. It does work with Chief of the Foundry, but... Maritime Guard number two. These are good to sideboard into against aggressive things. Although, I guess the Touch of Moonglove would let me steal with Willbreaker. That's something to keep in mind, I guess. Slugs for days. Um, trying to debate whether I want to play 18 lands or if that's not a good idea. I mean, our deck's okay. It's not fantastic. I would have liked some more hard removal. We have some good controlling spells. We have some ways to get a little bit of card advantage. But overall, there's nothing like bonkers in here. I don't mind playing 18 lands if my 18 land... If I'm running an Evolving Wilds and a Foundry. Okay. Maybe I do play 18 lands. Because Foundry is kind of like a spell. You know? And it, I'm going to want to get my 7 drop on turn 7. You know? My big dude. I think Throwing Knife's okay. I could see an argument saying it's not that good. But it is like a removal spell if I have any creature. Are there no other ways to target for Willbreaker, besides, I mean, Disperse just doesn't work. Um, is there nothing else that works? I mean, Weight works, but Nivix Barrier works, actually, but only on attacking creatures. I don't like that it's four mana. I actually thought it was three. Hmm. Yeah, there's not a lot of stuff to break Willbreaker with, is there? I don't even have... I mean, throwing knife. the throwing knife synergy with Willbreaker is, is nothing to overlook, but even separate as Void Mage doesn't work with it. I feel like I'm going to end up paying 5 mana for a 2-3 most of the time, which I don't think is good. Claustrophobia doesn't really work that well with Willbreaker. You steal it, but it's permanently tapped. So it's basically like you claustrophobia it, and then you disperse your own claustrophobia. I guess that works. It's not great, though. So we're kind of controlling, but I want more of a late game, but I just don't have it. I mean, I'm glad I picked up the 7-drop because we were short on wind conditions, but... This deck needs more. I mean, what do I? Yeah, it almost seems like, I think we got cut out of black. I think that's what happened. So I probably should have gone green, blue. But... I mean, I saw... A, yeah, I think we probably should have dipped out of black. I think blue is the right choice, but we should have gone into... We should have stayed in green. So we should have gone blue-green instead of blue-black. I think I was just wanting to go into blue-black because we had Unholy Hunger, pretty much. But, like, looking at our black cards now in retrospect is, like, just not that good. Um, hmm. 
I think we're gonna cut Willbreaker. It's just too pricey. I don't have enough ways to abuse it. If I had like a Rogue's Passage, I'd probably keep it. But I'm not gonna run Nivix Barrier just to turn it on. That doesn't seem correct. So I'll cut Willbreaker. Maybe have to play Catacomb Slug, which I don't love. But we're very creature light. I maybe even cut like a Bone to Ash for another Slug. God, that's so bad. Slugs for days. Maybe I bring in one of our weights just to get a little bit more removal. It's not a very good removal spell, though. But I feel like I already have enough counter spells. And I have enough. If I'm going to play Dismissal and Clash of Wills, I probably don't need Bone Dash. I'd rather just have something that weakens. I mean, the nice thing about Throwing Knife, I guess, is Aspiring Aeronaut works well with it because we get a couple targets that we can equip. I don't mind having one piece of equipment despite being a little bit creature light. And actually, Screeching Scab works well with our Shadows of the Past, so that's good. I, I think Shadows of the Past is actually a good card in this deck despite being a little bit creature light. Return Centaur, Screeching Scab fills it, so it's a good win condition. Our win conditions are, are pretty much Shadows of the Past, High Arbiter, or throwing knife on like a, a flyer. And that's about it. So I probably... I'm trying to think if I want to play another weight, but I don't think that we have to. I could play it over a Dismissal. Because I don't think Dismissal is a great card, but it kind of fills our curve a little bit better than a second weight. I think this might have to be the deck. We really have 14 creatures with Foundry. And like I said, I think Chief of the Foundry is at least good with our Aeronauts and Foundry of the Consoles. And it's a 3-mana 2-3. I actually just think this card is, is pretty good in this format. Our deck's not the worst. It's just not insane. So let's sort by color. Pretty evenly split, but we're going to run both of these. And we are running... Oh, wait. Did I, I forgot to make a... I think we do actually want 18 lands still. So maybe I don't play the weight of the Underworld. I kind of want to keep this slug. I feel like we need more ground blockers. We need just more creatures. So I could cut... Uh, no, I think we cut the weight. It's just not a very good removal spell. I think Massacre could come up big for us, though, in sticky situations. We have Read the Bones and Tower Geist to sort of mitigate some Flood. And Foundry of the Consoles, like I said, is more of like a spell than a land in the mid to late game. So that could be big for us too. Okay. So we're going to do this. Not an insane deck, unfortunately. So I think if I could go back, I would build blue-green. I think that would have been wiser because I have some pretty powerful green cards already. But uh, I felt like pack one... It felt correct to dip out of green. I felt like I, I think there just wasn't a ton of green open in pack one. I'd have to go back and look. But like, I feel like pack two and three, we saw some pretty powerful green fairly late. So my mistake was staying in black. But I think blue was, was actually a wise choice. I think that seventh pick uh, Separatist Void Mage was a pretty good sign that it was open. So I think we do Evolving Wilds and pretty much an even split. I need blue slightly more than black, but I do need double black. I like I want to hit a turn four Eye Blight Massacre sometimes, you know? So I think I actually do an even split here. So it's like 9-9 nine, nine with the Evolving Wilds, which seems wise. Okay, so not a very bonkers deck, but it we've got some win conditions. We've got some potential decent options here. A little bit removal light, but we have a couple counter spells. Got a little bit of value with throwing knife maybe on a flyer or two for some better blocks for us maybe. We'll see. All right. Running it like this, we'll see round one. 